thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, Jérôme Saint-Louis from uh, HRA in, uh, in Canada. And today I would like to talk to you about our uh, styling language, uh, which can be used with both 2D or, or uh, 3D maps. Um, so f first, uh, I would like to give you a, a bit of an overview. I don't know if anybody saw my talk yesterday. If so, that will be a, a bit repetitive. I apologize. But just to give you the, the background of our uh, Gnosis uh, toolkit. Uh, so basically, it's a, it's a complete visualization, uh, geospatial visualization stack. Uh, it includes a map server, a GIS tool, and also a, an SDK. Um, and in terms of the uh, the services, so we're, we're implementing the classic OGC services, but we're also working uh, on implementing support for the new upcoming uh, OGC API. Um, the GIS tool can do things like uh, produce styles, uh, applying the, the styles, so we're building a styling editor for, for this styling language. And the software development kit, we program it in uh, EC, which is our own uh, object-oriented programming language. Uh, but we also have a system, uh, a little bit like Swig, but it's our, our own tool um, that automatically builds uh, bindings to other languages. Uh, because EC has uh, reflection and object orientation, so it, it can produce actually uh, pretty good bindings for each language because it, it has a good way to uh, to model the uh, the different classes. So for, for right now we have uh, C bindings, Python, and we're also working on the generation of C++ bindings, and Java and C Sharp are, are next in line. Uh, so our, our EC programming language, it's, uh, it's a superset of the C language, so any C code is technically valid uh, EC code, uh, but it adds classes, properties, uh, dynamic modules, and, and reflection. Uh, so that language I uh, started in 2004, eclang.org, and it's compiled. That's the nice thing about it. So you can write very uh, high performance code, but it, it's also uh, executing, uh, uh, it's also easy, uh, fast to actually write it. Um, and also our uh, Gnosis Geospatial Toolkit also uh, leverage our Cherry SDK, which is also uh, all open source, the Cherry SDK, and that uh, includes a uh, cross-platform GUI toolkit uh, it supports multiple platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, uh, WebGL, and uh, the Odroid, which is this tiny device, a little bit like the uh, Raspberry Pi, but with a GPU and FreeBSD. So it's very, from the ground up, very cross-platform. And we also, it includes a 2D and 3D graphics engine, and it's also in the Debian and Ubuntu uh, repository as a Cherry SDK. Uh, so our Gnosis platform is built on, on top of that. So now about the, the actual uh, Gnosis CMSS, the, the styling language. Uh, so the goal is that you can uh, style multiple map layers. Uh, so whether it's vector imagery or, or coverage, and it's all based on a cascading rule system. And we're testing it uh, with both the classic cartographic projection, but also with the virtual 3D globes. And the, the idea is to have very clear mechanics uh, the, with the nested rules that can inherit, so only uh, use it a more general rule, but then for specific cases with additional selectors, then you change some specific part of the style, so it can uh, result in very concise uh, styling, very expressive, very easy to, to modify. And uh, expressions are used both inside the selectors to decide whether some uh, styling, some styles is going to be applied, uh, but also for the actual value of the symbolizer. So, so you can uh, have the expressions used directly when you set, for example, the, the width of a line or, or uh, uh, the size of a, a dot marker, something like that. So you can directly put an expression here that reference the, the attributes of the data. Um, so. Uh, at, at the, the foundation for it, the, it was the CMSS, it, it's an encoding uh, um, in the OGC test beds. We've been working on a uh, sort of a conceptual model for, for styling to try to achieve uh, styling interoperability, uh, which is a really big challenge. So I think it's been going on for many years and it will probably keep going for, for long again. Uh, but the idea is to sort of have one conceptual model but different encodings for it. So we're our CMSS is trying to be a, a sort of a, a very uh, generic, very close to the, the conceptual model, very easy to, to translate uh, different other styling language, for example. Uh, the actual uh, cascading and the selectors aspect of it was inspired by uh, the web CSS, but also uh, Cartoon CSS. 
And um, so the CMSS itself, it's actually a specialization of what is now a general purpose ECCSS. Um, and what ECCSS basically is, um, so previously, so we have our EC language, right, which is uh, like an object-oriented C, and so it adds objects to the C language. Uh, so the syntax is, is much inspired from this, but from the EC language, a, a subset of it describes uh, objects, and that syntax that describes objects is very similar to JSON, if you're familiar with JSON, but the main difference is the colon becomes an equal and you lose the quotes on the left-hand side of assigning things to properties. So that's econ, and then ECCSS, inside ECCSS there are pieces that are exactly econ. So that's sort of the syntax inspiration for, for what it looks like, and I'll show you in, in a second. And uh, econ itself, so that's also uh, something we use extensively in, in all our programs because it's very easy to go from the data uh, to the code, so we can just, uh, the actual econ data definition is valid code in our EC language, so it's easy to, to work together. Uh, so there's a link here to uh, eclang.org uh, slash econ, that's uh, the definition of this. And the links here um, from the uh, OGC uh, engineering reports there are actually the definition of the, uh, the, the current draft definition of the uh, cascading map style sheets uh, language. So now I'll show you some examples. Uh, well, before the examples, this is sort of the uh, the overall conceptual model of it. Um, so basically, uh, it starts with the style sheet, which is basically uh, defining a style. Uh, inside your style sheet, you have multiple rules, and then each rule has a, an expression that uh, sort of the selector, and then you can apply the the style or maybe symbolizer is is more the appropriate terminology with the OGC terminology. Uh, so style here should actually say symbolizer now. And and here you have all the different properties you can set. And then you have specific things which applies to shapes, for example, so like the stroke or the fill. And, and then we have also the concept of uh, labels and markers. And inside your label, you can have multiple objects that make up your label. So you can build a, a label with some text and also an icon. And then this will be applied, for example, if you have a, a point features. So that's a, and then for the actual graphics definition, we have all the different shapes here, which also can be styled uh, with the uh, symbolizing uh, aspects here. So here's here's the first example. Uh, so if you're familiar with Carto CSS or Geo CSS, it looks quite familiar. Um, so at the top is the, uh, the layer selector, so it just selects the, the layer ID. So this style is for styling buildings. Uh, and then you have the, the concept, so between the, the curly braces is all the symbolizing that's gonna be applied for the buildings layer. And you have the, uh, the nested rules uh, inside here. So the second curly block is a nested rule. So what this means here is by default, all the buildings are not visible and the, uh, they should be drawn at the Z order eight. And if your scale denominator is smaller or equal to uh, 127,000, then you also apply this style on top of it. So that's the nested style here. So if, if, you, uh, if you zoom in close enough, then you'll have uh, the visibility turned on for the buildings. You'll have a color apply uh, to the fill. And at this zoom level here, uh, there won't be a stroke. So it's just going to be the, uh, the fill for the buildings. So that's, that's the basics. So it, it's very concise. It's very easy to work with. And you can see the, uh, the econ syntax here, which is basically the, the curly braces and the property, the equal, and the, the semicolon. So that's just, and this is also a, a valid EC objects when, when you have just that. Uh, but EC objects doesn't have the, the concept of selectors. So the nice thing about uh, the reason we did the ECCSS instead of just writing the styles in JSON or econ is that it lets you write the, the expression in, in a native way here. Whereas if you use uh, JSON, you have to, uh, it's not very uh, intuitive to, uh, to write expressions uh, as selectors or as values. So uh, you have to either encode them in strings or, or resort to things that are not very easy to, to, to work with. Uh, which I find is the case with the um, Mapbox GL stars, for example. 
And this is another example here. So this is a more specific rule. So if you zoom in even further, we're going to start to add a stroke to the building. Uh, so you're going to have a, a thin uh, line uh, around the, each building. And we're also going to start labeling the buildings, for example. And so here you see the, the label property. And it's actually, so the label is an object. That's the curly braces. And inside your object, uh, you, you'll have an array of elements that you want to define for each building. So that's the uh, uh, array syntax here. And so the first object we'll create is was only one object. In this case, we only want to put some text. So that's the text object. And so that the actual value for the text will be the name attribute, which is taken from the attributes of the data. And then uh, the label will be white. And we select a font. We apply an outline to the font, so this a black outline around the font. Uh, so this, that's, the, that's the basics of it. So this is pretty much the, how uh, ECCSS or CMSS looks like. And this is a, another example here trying to uh, style the roads from uh, OSM data, for example. Um, so here you can see the in operator. So instead of having to, to repeat the, the different expression, we say if the highway is in any of these values, then this uh, the, these symbolizer will apply. And you can also see here the case where uh, rather than setting the whole stroke object, we'll just change the color or we'll just change the color of the casing of the stroke. Uh, so it's going to inherit the, the default, uh, the width, uh, and every other property of the stroke, the opacity of the stroke. Uh, so that's that case here, just the same thing here. It's also applying the, the Z order so you can uh, layer your, your uh, your roads, uh, the visual priority um, based on this. So this is actually pretty optimized for a client-side rendering using a, a z-order mechanism, as opposed to uh, uh, having like defining multiple layers of roads to draw. So it just says that these elements should be rendered before those, but we can render all of them in a single pass, as opposed to having to do one pass to render the roads and then render all the roads again with different styles. So this is makes it very efficient for the 3D rendering. And this is sort of an overview of all the types of uh, expressions you can have in ECCSS. So uh, an, 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 an sorry, identifier, uh, like a feature code, for example. So this, you just write like this, and that, re that means an, exp uh, an attribute in your data set directly. So you don't have to put anything special. It's just a, the, like uh, the name of the identifier, and that's resolved to the attribute in the data set. Then you can have a, a text string. You can use uh, integer or real numbers. Uh, you can use objects. So there's a few cases where, where objects are used. For example, here, this is an example value of uh, uh, that for defining the time. So if you want to do a, a time series comparison, uh, so you can use that. Uh, the text object, like we saw earlier when defining the label, so you can define graphical elements. Uh, so that's part of the language syntax. Another example would be a, a circle, and you can set like the, the radius of the circle to, to display it. And another example is uh, the list, but I actually got that wrong in the here. Uh, so the list was more like uh, the in, so what we saw earlier, like uh, in, uh, primary, secondary, so you can have more than one value. So that's the list with the uh, the uh, array syntax, like the, uh, the square brackets. And then you can have a, also a variable, which can be something that the application can modify, uh, and the style sheets can uh, use that basis to, to use application settings, for example. And so the identifiers themselves, there's a few different types of identifiers as well. There's the null value as enumeration system, uh, which is just directly written like true or false. Um, there's uh, objects that are predefined, such as the, uh, the layer, for example. So you can do like layer.id, layer.geometry. And there's the viz, which refers to the visualization properties, like the scale denominator. And you can also refer to a specific record, so get the geometry of the record or the ID of the record to use in your selectors. Uh, and then you can refer to all of the, uh, the data attributes as well. And there's also an identifier for records, which means all of the records in the data set, uh, which you could use, for example, with an iterate function to 
test for uh, overlapping so that you can apply different styles if you have features overlapping with, with uh, one feature. And then, uh, so it's a full expression language, so you have all uh, the basic operators, logical, comparison, uh, there's text-specific operators to check if a string uh, contains, begins with, or ends with. Uh, you can do arithmetic, you can change the priority with the parentheses. You have the conditional operator, so that you can, for example, apply easily, concisely, to find different things for different scale denominators, all inside the same symbolizer. Uh, so this is the list example here uh, within. And you can also have function calls, for example, the, the length of the centroid uh, of the geometry, for example. Um, so that's, you can of course, this is also extensible, so more functions can be added. And uh, so this is sort of the, the roadmap for the work ahead. So it's, it's still all very heavily in, in uh, development. At uh, the bottom here, you can find the repository where a lot of the source code for this is. Uh, currently, the, the core CCSS parser and the styling engine are all open source. Uh, our 2D and 3D uh, graphics engine, the core of it is also open source. Um, one of the things we're doing right now is uh, improving our uh, style editor to really uh, use this uh, CMSS model and make it easy to edit improvements to this. And we're also working on translation to and from other styling languages, including uh, SLDSE, Mapbox GL styles, and also eventually we'd like to do a GeoCSS, uh, which is GeoServer supports. And um, we're also working with the uh, uh, OGC API. There's going to be a styles module, uh, which is going to be able to retrieve and upload and uh, so you can edit and uh, you can exchange, you can discover uh, style sheets. So that's going to be uh, very powerful, I think. So we're working on integrating with that as well. Uh, eventually, we'd so we're also working on testing with uh, the full OpenStreetMap uh, with some bright style, trying to make it look uh, as close to, uh, to it as possible uh, as one example of testing uh, how well this works. Uh, we were improving uh, the definition of how to style the, the raster data, like uh, coverages and uh, imagery. And uh, right now, um, we're working as part of the testbed for 15 portrayal in the OGC uh, on, the, on this task, which covers a lot of, of this here. And at the end of the year, there will be published uh, videos and engineering reports about this, so that will be quite interesting, I think, uh, when this is ready. And other things that uh, we have on the roadmap is styling more specific to 3D, uh, like rules, for example, for, for styling 3D models and uh, 3D solids, and doing extrusion of polygons and lines to, to display them uh, in 3D. And you could even have uh, markers, which are uh, animated 3D models, for example. Uh, we also would do some projects with segmented reality. So you could have selectors, which are based on the, the pattern recognition to, to apply certain styles, so that, I think that would be very uh, interesting. And we also, this ECCSS, like I say, it's not specific to cartography at, at, at the core of the styling language, so it's uh, something that we want to use also for styling our user interfaces, uh, not, not only the, the map, so that's, uh, and since we have a cross-platform GUI toolkit also, uh, this is one area where we want to, uh, to use this as well. So if you're interested, I invite you to check out our uh, repository on GitHub. The, the dev branch is where all of this is uh, happening. And this is uh, an example here of uh, OpenStreetMap style using this. So this is uh, still work in progress. So we're still working on improving all this. And since this, we actually were uh, switched to a whole new gra graphics uh, engine version as well, so uh, we're still uh, improving this, and that's some of the work I'll be doing tomorrow in the, at the code sprint uh, tomorrow. So that's, uh, that's this. Uh, so thank you, and I uh, might have a video as well that I could show you if I still have time.
the way. Be patient. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Gerard. Thank you. And uh, do we have any questions? Thank you for presentation. Uh, what happens if text contains symbols not exist in font? So, sorry? Uh, what happens uh, with your engine if text uh, contain okay. symbols which are uh, not uh, yes but with symbols not exist in font for example mm -hmm. I have Arabic symbols in text by font not contain this right so so we actually uh, right now it's an interesting question because right now in Gnosis we have two uh, text engine which we're going to merge yeah, and yeah. one of them does the font substitution when a glyph is missing it's going to default to another font that does have the font uh, but currently, we're kind of in the middle of making these two engines work together. So uh, our goal is that uh, yeah, we would do the font substitution with another font that uh, that does have the symbol to replace it. So that's that's uh, one of the things we want to support. The default font, yeah. Uh, well, it's so, and it's different on the different platform, but on Windows, for example, there, there's actually like a, a registry entry which defines which font should default to which other font. Uh, so you can map, you can change the mapping of if, if like, if that one doesn't have a glyph, then it's going to go to a next one okay. that might have it. Um, and second question, have you this week solution for uh, your styles? Yeah, yes, so uh, we do have that, and I think the video uh, might show a bit of that. Uh, if not, we're, we're working right now on improving our style editor, but it's all uh, WYSIWYG based, so you, you have sliders and you have colors mm -hmm. and you see the styles right away, and okay. uh, you get a live update for it. Thank you. Uh, yes. I think VLC was displaying earlier, so it'll work. If we put, let's just have to put on the screen. So yeah. Right, so this is a, a video, the movie video that we did for one of the uh, OGC uh, Victor Tiles pilot activity, which was uh, the extension, which was focused on the styling. Um, So this might actually uh, this might actually be using that uh, that font substitution here, uh, or maybe it was using the Arial Unicode, which did have the uh, the Arabic fonts. Yeah. So this this is the night style. So we're testing different uh, switching the the style sheets from one to another. So this was the the night oriented style. And this is showing, this is the, our uh, editor here. Uh, so you can see you can edit the different expressions. You have your, uh, on the right list, you have your list of rules. And here's uh, showing here the, the live uh, the color editor. And uh, we also have a uh, geo package uh, exports. Yeah, this is showing uh, Google Maps integration with our uh, uh, terrain model. Now this is the topographic style that it was called. And, yeah. and here we're showing integration with uh, different participants in the, the vector tiles pilot, which produced the data. So it was big interoperability test between the different participants. And so I, earlier I talked about the OGC API, but GeoPackage is somewhere else that we're working on uh, integrating styling capability. And so that's also uh, something here. Any other questions? Um, so, uh, 
Great presentation, thank you. Uh, just for my understanding, um, if we wanted to create a WMTS layer, uh, so a rendered uh, already tiles, um, this would mean to use um, the software you are giving, uh, right? So uh, the way we saw that you can configure this, uh, so if we wanted to render open street maps as, uh, with your styling scheme, um, it would be through your software, right? Or are, are you considering integrating like this rendering uh, of the the um, um, styling concept into other uh, so, software solutions? So, well, my, my presentation is on the styling language itself, which any software could implement. And I would welcome anybody who's interested to contribute to develop this and implement this in other engines. And we're also working on the translation layer. Uh, and tools that we'll probably publish to do translation between different uh, languages, which uh, other, uh, like GeoServer, for example, could, could do it. Um, and also, where it's it's meant both for client side or server side rendering. And uh, for example, our server is going to be capable of, of generating uh, dynamic tiles, so you you can give it the style that you want to render, and then it's going to return you it return it to you already styled. Or you can request the feature data the vector data and the style separately, and then your client can render it using uh, your engine that uh, could implement this. So there's many, there's many ways to do it, but uh, like the, the CMSS thing is really is just purely the, a nice, concise way to edit and uh, write the styles, saying what, what, how you want to portray things. Yeah. So uh, let's say right now there is like two software solutions implementing this styling? Uh, so there's a server solution and a right, client well, solution? R right now, we there's probably actually only our client-based software. We're still working on making this server side too, but we're more focused, and I think in general, the industry is more going towards client side in, in the future because you have the, the GPU and all your all your mobile hardware anyway so it's much faster it's less transfer uh, you can do nicer things for 3d it's much better I think uh, so we're focused on the cl uh, client side but we also have planned to implement the server side and uh, we'd welcome other other people to uh, to implement this as well and oh, thank you thank you Thank you. Uh, just interesting, maybe I'm not sure if that's very valuable, but uh, did you compare the size of the style, for example, for some basic uh, OpenStreetMap styling in Mapbox, for example, styling and in your styling options? Well, so far we, we haven't really implemented the full uh, Mapbox style, but uh, and I don't know how much is, I know with SLD, this is much, much, much smaller. Uh, Ma but what I find with the map box style is it's very cryptic. It's very hard to to follow because uh, they they sort of encode things in a JSON way, which doesn't uh, well. It doesn't. I think they might, they might have some. I forget if they have some cascading aspect. Not really, right? I don't think they have. But it, it's just hard to work with. Uh, I find. But I don't know in terms of the size how compact it is. I think it also depends on what approach you take, but it should be comparable if not smaller, I think. Just out of curiosity, uh, I was wondering if it is possible to transform, for instance, SLD to CMSS or vice versa. Yeah, yeah that's what we're working on right now. So we're writing the importer and the exporter oh. to SLDSC and also to Mapbox GL styles. So those are the two uh, take, uh, core translators that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we're working uh, on that, uh, a tool to do that, exactly that right now. And later, we'd also like to do uh, the GeoCSS, same thing, having one way and the other way. So the idea is that this could act as a, as a nice uh, translation tool to any, uh, any other styling language. So that's kind of the big goal uh, of the styling uh, interoperability, I think. But it's it's challenging because each renderer support different features so it's and maybe do things slightly differently. So it's always not an exact science to, to translate styles from different engines, but it's we're still trying to do it as good as possible. And another question, this is both for raster and vector? 
Yeah, so we're, so far it's more focused on, on the vector, but uh, definitely in the next month we'll have the uh, the basic, uh, at least for elevation model styling will be there, and we'll have some basic things like uh, uh, brightness, opacity, saturation, which can uh, style the imagery. Or, uh, and, and for coverages also we'll, we'll have the, so applying a color map and uh, mapping the, the range or an offset for the values to, to colors. So we'll, we'll have that basic uh, functionality in, but that part is, is still in, in development right now. Thank you. Thank you.